Warning, this video may contain vulgar language and adult content. If you are easily offended or susceptible to events pertaining to death, gore, family troubles, or other potential threats, then know that viewer discretion is advised. Please be safe when viewing and stop the video if you need to. Safety is far more important to us than entertainment. So please enjoy your time here with us as we explore this fantasy world. Welcome everyone. Welcome back to One Shot Mishaps. We are coming back to this rapid leveling one shot and uh, our three guests are once again here. Um, we got uh, Dr. Leech over there, Stephanator down there, and uh, <laughs> Drake Twisted down there. <laughs> um, so once again, if we want to just go through characters real quick and... Uh, I'll do a recap, and then we'll just head right into it, so that way we can get get this going. So, feel free to talk yep. about your characters again, or just say your names, what you are. Yeah, so, Bye. Dr. Leach, I'm playing... Oh, sorry. Ah! <laughs> Larry right. Gaskell! Larry right. Gaskell first! Larry Gaskell first. Gaskell Dr. First. Leach, yeah, I'm playing Edgar, the uh, the uh, uh, skeleton undead warlock. Who, of Jurgle, and he is—he is at home here. This is this is a great place. I don't see why everybody has a problem with it. So it's been good. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, Stefan at the Stephanator, uh, playing Captain Storm, a Tiefling uh, Storm Sorcerer, uh, who is here trying to figure shit out. Yes, Captain. Chris Drink, the portal blood hunter, really old, really crinkly. I like Donnie. I like Ralph. Pizza, the color yellow. I don't like the shredder though. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> Which is ironic because that uh, apparently after I made my description and everything, that's when I found out the name of our ship is Shredder. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that. And I guess we never really introduced ourselves last session, but uh, Jordan, aka Ryder Hopkins, I am known as Kit Mitt, Kit Tick, or Guy. And my other two companions are. I I am. What is my name? I am Nick Knack, and I am also Guy. I am Tic Tac also Guy. <laughs> and we all go that guy. <laughs> and that's all we will say for now. <laughs> Somehow that guy has managed to be three people. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or those three people are all the same guy. All right. <clears throat> what happened last time is effectively they sailed the Shredder, which I forgot about the name of, um, <laughs> to make it to um, this island that has been rumored to have various different... Um, colorations of fauna as well as nobody ever leaving the island as uh, people have been just vanishing afterwards. But they sailed there, dove into uh, the the turtle, dove into some purple-esque water that then uh, kind of aged him a little bit. That's when they got to the island. They investigated some travel through the trees, and are making their way towards the large mountainous spire, effectively. And on the way there, there was this pulse, this almost wave-like of energy that washed over everyone and hit them very uh, forcefully and aged everyone, effectively um, a substantial amount of their... Uh, differentiating lives except for edgar dr leach as he is a skeleton <laughs> but... it's a great place for vacation but making their way through the trees there were moments where the trees leaves were just falling rapidly from different trees and that's when invisible bite marks began to emerge on people and rushing away, there was a combat initiated between these wolves and the party. But in a strange turn of events, 
Dr. Leech had gone into this <clears throat> fiscal and skeletal ghastly phase that seemed to wash over these wolves and take command over them. Until Bane decided to hit them with a sword, and then we had to finish them off. However, before that, it was very interesting. <laughs> murder hobo's got a murder hobo. And that's where we are just kicking off. There was a secondary crashing, booming wave that washed over everyone, and they felt their bodies getting substantially older, faster and faster and faster. Growing to level 5. I'd really hoped I would have gotten a pr uh, promotion by the time I reached this age. <laughs> what's everyone doctor, doing? Any, uh, I was going to say, Doctor, any idea what's happening here? You seem most in tune with this kind of magic. Well, it seems the death magic entirely permeates the island. I don't know if this is holy site or coincidental. I get the feeling that if if this was in tune with my god, I would be more familiar with it. I think something else is at play. I think I think we should keep moving. If we stay, if we linger any longer, we're going to keep getting older and older. Good point. Then let's head towards the tower, Spire Mountain thing. Way. <laughs> Are you traveling in the same sort of order that you were before? Guy in front, and then captain, and then that sort of deal? Yes. Okay. Making your way down the... Making our way down the... <laughs> Walking uh, fast faces... You have no idea how many times that joke comes up in our normal sessions. <laughs> <laughs> that, if, it's not d d unless that joke comes up. It, honestly, course. like, making the way down is a very common phrase. And everyone loves whoever that artist is. <laughs> I have no idea. Yes, I no don't know either. I just, no we just know knows. the song and the piano. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't you. Want to Let's make our way down. Time is, time is wasting. You're getting older by the seconds. <laughs> Making our way down. Rocky! <laughs> 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 Uh, who, who sang that tune? <laughs> I play the background on my xylophone ribs. <laughs> on your ribs? Anyways, making your way through yep. the trees, <laughs> you eventually crest beyond them, and you can see the ground itself is starting to get tailored upwards and starts to slant up going towards the massive expanse of land and the mountainous region itself. The island itself isn't necessarily large, so travel itself hasn't been time, time excruciating or difficult. It's just that as you are traveling on... <laughs> is that part of our episode? Yes! <laughs> You took a screenshot of of the mansion. It's literally the episode. <laughs> the the meta is the meta is eating the channel. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god, like see she's like wait. I'm familiar with that map. I was like, <laughs> it looks... I remember that black paper. Anyways. It was all like, wait, what is that? <laughs> you're standing at the base of what looks to be this extremely large mountainous region. It slants upwards, but there's a um, moment where it just spikes up, but there's an in-carved, um, very smooth almost entrance way into a cavern, it looks like. Shall we go in the cave, then? I would have a torch for the ones who can't see. 
Is there any writing or anything apparent on this? Does this appear to be a ruin of any sort, or it's just been exposed from the shearing of the face of the cliff? It's just exposed from the shearing. Hmm. Is there any kind of magic around it, because you don't have the glasses on? There's still that thin layer of magic over everything. Okay, and everyone. okay, okay. S- someday the archaeologist background will be useful. <laughs> someday. <laughs> someday over the rainbow, five blocks, somewhere that way. Uh, the trees around this area, do they still have their leaves? Yes, they do. Okay. The different so. color leaves? Yes. Like Dr. Seuss? <laughs> yes. So are you just going into the... Because you're going to have to go up the mountain to like look into and go into it effectively. You can't see what's inside from where you're standing. No, yeah, again, well, does anyone have any torches so we don't go in blindly? Uh, that should be standard adventuring gear. It should have come with your requisitions pack. Uh, okay, I'm just going to look in my bag with my arm... <laughs> I hold up the bag of holding above my head. <laughs> Which does you nothing. Uh, eyes as it's just an empty bag when he opens it to you. <laughs> so. Uh, you know what's in there. Grab it. I, 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 gra- I quickly grab it and throw it out of, from, I throw it out of the mouth. <laughs> the torch. There you go. Oh, it's right on the floor, right in front of me. I'll bend over and pick it up. (laughs) So it's dragging my hands through the dirt. (laughs) There's not dirt at this point. Now it's just rock. (laughs) So you're just scraping rock. (laughs) Anyways. I'll light the torch on fire. Oh, we'll light the torch on fire. Really? We'll light the torch. I thought you were going to throw it. Yeah, so you light the torch, and you go up to the mouth of this cavern and look inside, and you quickly gather you do not need this torch, (laughs) as the interior of it is lit. Um, There are sconces that don't have torches, but have small balls of light emanating from a pitch black orb. And they just travel down the passageway, until it opens out into an extremely large expanse. It travels inwards, probably a good 300 feet, before it expands outwards. And you can start to see the tops of certain structures on the inside, but it obviously goes back down, so it's hard to see what is directly in front of you without traveling to the end of this cavern. Well, I guess we don't need this torch anymore. Shall we proceed? Throw it over my shoulder. <laughs> Forest fire. Good job. But again, shall we proceed? Yes. Right. See no reason to tarry. Onwards. I'll take point. And I walk into the cave. Okay. Uh, so yeah, taking the steps forwards and moving towards the end of this hallway traveling the 300 feet and standing at what looks to be the end of uh, this essential hallway there are steps carved into stone that travel downwards into like a sort of winding way and directly in front of you is a large expanse of housing Uh, there's lights inside of the buildings themselves um, you can see individuals walking, traveling across, some pushing carts. There's the sound of tinging metals off into the distance. Uh, it, the... These are easily about 500, 600 feet down steps, so it's a fairly large distance. Uh, the houses, are they like stone or like wood? Uh, structures. They look to be made of stone. It's hard to necessarily tell from this distance, <clears throat> but they do look stone. Okay. People, are they like humans or are they that creatures? you cannot tell? Damn. Hey Not guys, from this distance. Hey they look humanoid. They have. They are standing on two legs and they have two arms. Uh, can we tell they're chained up? No, not from this distance. Yeah. Okay. Found a hose. <laughs> yes, I 
Well, we don't actually know if they're hoes just yet. But <laughs> yes, but are they bitches? Oh my god. <laughs> 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 my <just> god. <laughs> Well, I say we should go down there and find out what they are. Agreed, but should we do it stealthily or just march right in there? Ah! Uh... I could tuck myself in my shell and you could roll me down the stairs. And then I could pop out like, surprise! <laughs> I'm not really a stealthy kind of person either. Yes, we are. Yes. Shut up, brother. Fuck you. I don't know what you're talking about. Leaning over to uh, Dr. Leech, the captain goes, he's doing it again. Did you figure out the medication for him? It's very alarming. I think it'll have to wait till we get back to the ship, unfortunately. I'm making notes. I don't want drugs. Drugs are not fun. I don't want to go near them. The arms seem almost self-aware, as if it knows. I wonder if he's under the body. He by himself. <laughs> <laughs> what are you waving at, brother? Well, I wave and then I do the wave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then let's just make our way down these stairs. Not okay, being healthy. Mm. Uh, Cap. No. I mean, is there anywhere to even really be stealthy? Not like, necessarily, I, unless you. Because you could be stealthy getting closer to it, but then if you were to go <laughs> into the city, you wouldn't be necessarily stealth because there's not anything blocking you. It's just that right now you're far away, semi in the dark. Like I said, roll me down. I create ruckus, heal surprise, and then everyone tension be on me, and you guys be stealth. But then how are you going to get out? Third. How <laughs> high up are we? Um, the steps do travel the entire length of the 600 feet. So you're not necessarily super high. It's just that it's, um, it's a lot more of, uh, rigid and, um, odd terrain apart mm. from the stairs. Okay. They see me rolling. They hate him. Crashing. Would you like to roll in? It seems like you're really set on this. I don't want to disappoint you. I mean, anybody else got any ideas? Brothers, any idea what we can do? We could say hello. We could just walk in, brother. I believe walking in is just fine. <laughs> Alright. Then let's walk in. Captain says and starts to walk in. Total, if you, total. If you want to, you could just roll in while we walk in. Okay. <laughs> Who's gonna push me? You don't need a push. Uh, you could just go off to the side it. and then just go into your turtle, and you would be able to effectively roll. Is that what you want to do? Yep. Okay. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> For the oh sake of God. it, make a constitution saving throw. Oh no, he's got to puke his guts out. <laughs> oh God. Not the bagel. Not the bagel. 19. Bang. 19. Yeah. You're able to maintain your, your, your gird and just you're holding your in your innards. Um, you definitely feel like, man, these, this constant slamming into multiple rocks as you quickly gather, since it is rigid and not nearly as smooth, you're going off of leaps of rock, landing, bouncing off of other rocks, hitting some, sliding off the side of them. You're feeling like you're making concussions. Multiple concussions after just slamming into rocks and then sliding <laughs> off of them. But after some time, effectively, you do get down there significantly faster than everyone else. <laughs> but um, everyone can see as <clears throat> the turtle comes crashing down, you slam into like the side of another building. Uh oh. And... I came in like a wrecking ball. Well, you didn't break down the wall, but it did hurt a little bit, and you do suffer two points of bludgeoning damage from the slam. Uh, if I had to look as he saved. But um, everyone can hear in a very audible. 
There doesn't seem to be any reaction from the people. There goes our total friend. Brother, what the hell is that? So no one, no one reacts to me just bashing in, into the wall. You don't seem to hear or <laughs> see any kind of visible reaction. <laughs> I find that odd that no one cared to look. I have a feeling we'll find something very peculiar about these people down there. Yes. I say we should go investigate. Yep, so we could keep making our way down. Yeah. We, uh, find, we find the body of Johnny Quest. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> what about Johnny Bravo? <laughs> that would be any better. Only his glasses remain. Oh, I'm afraid he was actually wearing glasses. Um... Making your way down there. Are you doing anything, uh, Bane, as you have, are just kind of side stuck into the wall? Um, I'm gonna get myself unstuck. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, look around and then kind of observe people and wait. Okay. Yeah, no. Um, nothing's essentially happening. You're in an odd position to see people because you're in between the rigid, rocky terrain and a wall. So people aren't going in that direction. So you're not effectively seeing anyone. Except for your uh, naval force workers. People who are... Uh, what, what am I trying to say? Your friends are coming down the steps. <laughs> My brain is melting. <laughs> <clears throat> but as everyone else gets closer and closer, you're standing about 50 feet before getting into the city. Nobody seems to be paying any attention to you, making any direct eye contact with you. They just seem to be working in their general space. They look to be humanoid. You don't see any chains on anyone. In my professional medical opinion, do these people appear to be dead? Um... Going up to the closest one would be, like, this lady who's pushing a cart full of nothing. And, um... Inspecting their body, the, their skin tone, their... The generating heat, they are alive, at least from what you can glean without stopping them and actually, like, doing tests or anything, but they look alive. They have faces... Ma'am, I like, I poke a skeletal finger and like, is your foreman here? <laughs> foreman? Uh, as this is you the foreman? Uh, what about the goblin? As you poke her in the side, she just continues to walk. Uh, Captain's gonna walk up and just like grab her arm and go, Excuse me, ma'am. We need to speak with you. What's going on here? As you grab and pull the arm, the other one comes off as well. Like, not off, off. Like, they both come say. off of the cart. And, <laughs> and <I was> expect- <laughs> you're holding onto her arm, and she's looking at, to, at her arm, and you can feel her trying to just pull from your grasp while her other hand is still grasping the cart. She doesn't look up to you or anything. You can just see her face is dropped and she's staring at her arm trying to get pull it from you. Uh, Captain's going to lift her face up, you know, like, grab her, like, chin to look into her eyes and see if there's, like, if you can see anything going on in there. Um, looking into her eyes, you can see her uh, pupils are fully dilated. Um... And kind of just, like, looking into it, she doesn't seem to have many facial expression. Um, you can feel her resistance trying to, like, look back down at the arm. When you pull her up, though, there's a thin line that comes up the neck from the front. And you can see it kind of goes down beneath her shirt um, and goes beyond your sight, effectively. 
uh, turning to, um, you know, his companions behind him, Captain goes, Looks like she's under some kind of influence, drugs maybe, magic, whatever it is, she has a scar on her. Right down the middle. May have been some kind of operation that made her this way. Well, I see, Tyler. What? What do I see with the glasses, you know, because... Hmm. Well, you see that thin layer of necrotic energy again. On what them? Are... On them. Okay. You do see a point of, like, concentrated necrotic energy. Everything has ha so far had, like, a thin layer of it, and you can just, like, feel that energy. But you can visibly see a concentration of more magic above her chest. Like, right around the heart. So what I can see with my glasses, there's a lot of concentrated necro ma necromatic magic surrounding her chest area. Most likely around the heart. What sloppy work? Excuse me, Doctor, are you familiar with this kind of work? Necromancy? I study all forms. Oh, he looks at his own body. <laughs> Do you know what's wrong with these people then, Doctor? I can investigate. Doctor. Sure, make an arcana check. Doctor. Doctor. <laughs> Doctor, doctor, doctor. Where did you get your degree? Doctor. <laughs> Graves. <laughs> degree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he oh, pulls boy. out his dirt like... self-appointed. Uh, so unfortunately, it's only a 13. 13? There's a lot of magic that delves with um, body parts, organs, exceptionally, um, and a lot of like history around the heart and its symbolism as well as uh, use in certain magics. It's difficult to pinpoint what magic that she's under, but none of them are good, as far as you would know from that. It would not be anything effectively uh, positive. Well, looks as though she's under the effect of some sort of enchantment, but through the use of necrotic means. I've never seen a spell quite like this. Very interesting, and uh, Captain will let go of the woman. Um, nope. The moment you let go, her hand clasps, like, almost robotically back to the cart, and she just starts to move. I wonder if it were to be dispelled if she would simply die. Or be released. You want to kill an innocent lady? I'm thundering if she's already dead or not, considering the nature of this island. Is this a half zombie, or is this something else? Is this the fate of anyone who comes here? Hmm. I mean, how is everyone feeling? A little older, but otherwise just as usual. This woman didn't look old, did she? Um, no. In fact, she looks fairly young. I say if you have experiments to run, go right ahead. The more we can learn, the quicker. I think that's the best. Cut her in half and see what's on the inside. Dude! <laughs> <laughs> I will attempt to dispel magic. We'll see what happens. Okay. <laughs> do I need on, to roll? On who? No, you do not need to roll. As you cast the magic onto her, the targeted like magic that's on her like so you have the glasses on guy you can see magic the um magic of the dispel magic itself uh encapsulating her and washing off but there's no immediate change um dr leach you feel that magic pinpointed correctly and targeted her but there's 
not a source of magic from her. Well, curious. Just, you feel like there's not a source of magic that's in or on her. Guy, you said the magic was coming from everywhere, correct? Yes. It will faint faintly everywhere, but there's no pinpoint location where it's coming from, like where I saw on that woman in the heart area. Then I would suggest they're being controlled from the tower. It seems the only course at this point. Unless well, you're there's in, something you're different. in that mountainous sort of um you're in that mountainous... Uh, yeah, we're in the mountain, and there's yeah. the, the tower as we approach the center. Uh, I mean, well, the... The, it's not necessarily a tower. The whole mountain itself with the flat, uh, scaled top was the structure. Oh, okay. mm. One second, I'm just going to close my door. Alright, let's talk shit about him. What yeah. The... Shit. Yeah. God damn it. He's really nice and fun, and he runs a really good game. Wait, is that good or bad? <laughs> <laughs> Must be all that ramen he's been eating. Guys, guys, I got it. We just all die. You, I got a book to do that makes a pact to Jurgle. You guys all just write the pact, and we'll all be skeleton bros. I think I think that's the easy way out here. Uh, skeleton <laughs> bros lighting a guy. I think. What did I be a skeleton too, or just the goblins? The guy's already a skeleton. <laughs> yeah, the guy's already a skeleton. <laughs> It's really just it's really just skeletons in a trench coat. This is where we find out. <laughs> <laughs> we were all skeletons the whole time. On the inside. You're all just fever dreams. <laughs> Anyways, what's everyone doing? Killing me. Uh, so the rest of this this city, uh, you know, or, or these structures, is there like a, a, a central focal area, some kind of large building or something? When you're out. Now... When you're looking through it and kind of like looking for anything that stands out, this is almost like a colony. There's just buildings meant for stay with remedial tasks like um, clothing and smithing. There's not a head building. There's just homes, occupations, and remedial work. There doesn't seem to be any central infrastructure. And, and the people were passing... I mean, I would assume, you know, just given what we know, that these are people that might be like sailors and stuff. Is that true? Are we seeing, you know, people that might correspond to the ships we saw in the harbor? Um, if everyone's just kind of like staying together and investigating, um, we won't we won't need to make a check. Uh, you would be able to recognize um, an individual. So, effectively going through and checking people and trying to ascertain, find a building of uh, importance, there's this woman, and she's... You would remember her as a um, member of the scouting division of the naval force. One of the main reasons why you were sent here was because people were not coming back from investigating it. Mm -hmm. So, this woman was a head... Um, uh, like a lieutenant in the in the naval forces scouting division. She's what well, effectively walking through the streets aimlessly. Go talk. You go talk to her. Yeah. Okay. Approaching her, she's just consistently going and talking with, like, almost panic in her voice. She's saying, Stop! Collaborate and listen. Patty? Patty? What? Patty? 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 She looks like she's calling out to someone. When she says Patty, I'm gonna say Kate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens. <laughs> 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 is 
this the first person we've encountered that's like speaking or making any noises? There have been people talking, but it's a lot of it was just gibberish. This is the first individual that you're talking to that's vocal to the point of understanding. So yes, this is it's effectively this is a person that you have been able to understand in comparison to the others. So when Tortlebane approached her, did she seem to react in any way? No. She seems to have probably been doing something like this for a while. Well, we found out what happened to the scouting division that came here. But leads us no close to, to the answers we seek. Take a possession of the area. We're like searching for stronger points of magic. Uh, sure. Make a uh, make a perception check. Uh, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Um, looking over people, you just keep seeing very consistently that necrotic concentration over their heart. Looking at buildings, looking at the ceiling, looking around, you're not spotting any concentration of magic or any differentiating magics than what you already have been. However, looking over everything and looking past things, it does seem like there's a staircase on the opposing side of the city that seems to be going upwards. Hey guys, I see a flight of stairs over there leading somewhere else. I think we should take it. I agree. Not doesn't seem like there's much more we can learn here. If no one's going to respond to us. Except Daddy. for that. Daddy! And she grabs your arm, uh, Bane. Please help me find my daughter. Patty, please. Uh, what's she look like? Where did you see her last? There's no response. Wave hand in front of face. <laughs> There's no fingers response. in front of face. Give her a wet lily. <laughs> when you put your finger in her ear... <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> no, nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> you feel this course of necrotic energy coming into your fingertips. <laughs> <clears throat> Down uh, below, something else is happening. Brother, brother, we're gonna snatch her. So she's looking for her daughter. I'm try to break my arm out of her grip. Yeah, it's not hard. It's more so like she's just like grabbing onto you, um, not like in a forceful way, more of like a pleading way. Uh, when you do, she immediately just like looks off into the distance again, just starts chanting out. Patty! Patty! You said she was a naval captain? L L lieutenant. Yeah, lieutenant. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think Captain would, like, march up and go, Lieutenant, report! What's going on here? Make a pers persuasion check. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm good at that. Oh, yeah. All right, all right, all right, 22. 22? You see her, for a moment, break out of, like, this trance-like gaze, and you can see her straighten her legs, straighten her, her posture. But then she just starts to chant out again, Patty! Patty! She's just looking straight at you. Forgot uh, to turn off the voice. Forgot to turn it off there. Damn it. I need to learn how to do this better. I have a, I, I'm going to put it on the keybind. Nice. Uh, Captain is just going to go, Lieutenant, what's going on here? Report. That undertone of voice beyond her initial voice is starting to like ease out of her uh, voice when she speaks out. Loss everyone K 
can't find source. Uh, Captain's gonna continue to, you know, prod her. I need more, Lieutenant. What happened? Where did everyone else go? They are here helping the town. Helping? Helping how? No one's doing anything here. You're all wandering about doing nothing. It's what they said. They said, said we were helping. It. And you Who can told see, you to do this? You can see the line that's in her throat that goes down across her chest. It gets darker. It's starting to widen. As if it's like a vein. Patty? Patty? Uh, he's gonna... Captain's gonna take her and start to, like, shake her, and then also, like, look towards the, uh, uh, Edgar and be like, Doctor, do you have any idea what's going on here? Magic that's controlling her. It's too strong. We have to go to the source. Towards them. So at least we know someone's here controlling these people. Causing them to do this. Yes, I can't do anything from here. As you say. Uh, Captain re releases her and goes, Don't worry, Lieutenant. We'll figure this out. Like Guy suggested, we should probably head up those stairs. She goes wandering off, screaming for Patty again. Are you going to do the voice again? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> Don't need to. Alright, I believe we should get going then. Before we wind up like them. I'll never end up a mindless drone like that. But you're right, let's go. And Captain, and I assume the rest are going to head towards those stairs. Yep. Yep. I okay. fever I'm feverishly writing notes in my book. <laughs> yeah. So making <clears throat> all of these steps, you can tell that they're winding upwards around the entirety of this massive cavern. From where you entered, seeing them would have been nearly impossible for two reasons. One, they're not lighted, so walking across them is effectively walking slightly in a corner of a room where the light is barely touching. Mm. And then also, they're going upwards embedded into the wall, so they're circling the entire area. So it was over the top of the entranceway from where you came from. Now that you're looking back and seeing it from that distance. Climbing these will take a substantial amount of time, but after getting about 75% of the way up, you are now standing approximately 800 feet in the air. Oh! Ooh wee. The walls themselves are getting closer and closer as it's more of a dome towards the top of this, and eventually you get to the top of what looks to be almost a completely stationed um, not stationed uh, geometric square there's an embedding into this structure that's directly above the massive dome and it's a complete rectangle cube sorry that's the thing I was thinking of of just taken out stone. Directly in the middle of the room there looks to be thick layers of darkened 
black glass. And you can see through it, seeing straight down into the massive city. Or the colony itself. Is there any magic on that glass? I mean, there's still that thin layer, but otherwise, no. Okay. Uh, is there anything else in this room? Uh, in the room, no. Uh, so the staircase just leads up here, and then... That's it? That... Just a glass? Yep. Wow. It's like a giant it's FU. In... <laughs> it's in the center of, like, the cube, which is in the center of, effectively, the city. But above it, right? Yeah, directly above it. And then what? Is it just the glass on the top, or is it like... There's glass on the top, yeah. And then there's yeah, glass it's... on the floor. Okay, so it's pretty much glass ceiling, glass floor. Right. In a in a circle, yes. It's not yes. the entire floor. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna walk out onto the glass. Okay. Stepping out onto the glass, uh, your feet stand on top of what looks to be like almost as it, it feels like you're almost floating because you look down, you're just above nearly a thousand feet drop. Um. And then. Yeah? Do you do anything? You're just standing... Are there, are there any rooms around? Any other rooms? No. You look at the walls, look at the ceiling, look at the floor, look for other stairs, you don't see anything. Can we see out of the glass above us? Uh, are you standing on the glass in the center, or are you standing off to the side? Uh, I guess off to the side, but if I need to move in to get a better look, I would. Well, when you're standing off to the side and you look up at the glass, it's... I mean, it is see-through, but you're seeing rock on the other side. Okay. I guess well, Edgar is doing the look up. Glass. Okay. Um, Edgar, as you look up, you see the sky. Hmm. This appears to go all the way up. Really, I don't. And then, you know, he walks out onto the glass. The mm. camera walks out and looks up. When you look up now, you do see, in fact, the sky. The sky. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. Uh, Bane, what'd you say? What would happen if we broke the glass? I mean, I don't know. The one below us or above us? Below. We would fall. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely. I'm gonna. Am I able to jab my sword up at the glass above us? Uh, it's 15 it feet in the up? air. It's 15, 15 feet. 15 feet upwards. up in the air. Yeah, this this cube is 15 feet by 15 feet by 15 feet. Throw it. Throw it. <laughs> no, can't can't throw. No, 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 no. But I'm gonna... I can do a running jump. <laughs> As he does that, can I use uh, the cantrip gust to send some wind underneath them? <laughs> to oh, lift them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that, that might be a bad idea when you guys do it. <laughs> well, we're we're going to hit the, the top. We're, <clears throat> we're going to do the top glass. Maybe we can get out that somewhere. But then he might land on the bottom glass and we all go crashing down. <laughs> I mean, I only weigh 300 pounds. It's fine. So as he's doing this, Cap backs up to the solid stone. Yeah, I go back to the I, stair, uh, too. I remain, in, I remain in the center, because I'm trying to figure out if this is a magic elevator, and then this happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as you make a running jump, the captain, snap of the finger, this gust of wind shoots up beneath your feet, and you lift upwards into the air slightly. Uh, make an attack roll. Nat 20. Well, I mean, that's going to hit. <laughs> With the critical damage. Uh, you truly are the bane of DM. <laughs> <laughs> A title is earned. Yeah. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14. 14. 
14. So What'd you... Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> um, gets flying off like a rocket ship. <laughs> yeah, so you jump up into the air. You bring your blade upwards. And you said you're going to try to stab upwards, right? Like, yeah. slash upwards. Oh, okay, so bringing like, the length of the blade up against it. Yep. As Just you do, yep. <laughs> you bring it up, you collide with it, your hand comes underneath the blade and sinks partially into the glass. Except it looks as if your blade's going straight through it. And right as you bring your blade up, it phases partially through the glass, and what your, you thought your hand would stop as you're off to the side, so you're bringing it upwards, your hand is, like, bent backwards partially, as if you hit the lip of something. Oof! And Y'all see this shit! And you start to fall back from your jump. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Captain will try to catch him like with a calming gust to make sure okay. he doesn't come crashing down. Yeah, you, you're able to substantiate it enough to where if you were to fall being 300 pounds, it's not going to necessarily break anything. You, oh, damn it. You still do, <laughs> you still do um, <clears throat> slam into the ground and make an audible thudding sound as the ground itself is starting to crack slightly. Hmm. Good work. <laughs> so yeah, what did you so find out? Maybe exit. Like blade went through wrist, not so much. Hmm. I have a thought. I'm gonna lean down on the bottom one and I'm gonna press see if I can press my hand against the floor one. Like put your hand onto it and just push? Yeah, I'm gonna put my hand onto it, see if that does anything, or if I am able to push through. Uh, pushing doesn't seem to do anything. Just putting your hand on okay. it, hmm. pushing slightly. To clarify on what happened, it looked because when you jumped up, it, you saw through the glass because you're in between the two panes. You saw through the glass and you saw the sky. When you brought your blade up, the blade passed through the glass, and your hand did as well. It's just that what it felt like was when you were moving and bringing it up, it collided with like a lip of something. Like, if your hand hit the end of a bottle. Oh! Uh-huh. So there's, so, like, a hole and then there's hard surface around it. And so is this Roughly a, in that area. It's like if your hand hit a ring. The top is still open and the bottom's still open. It's just that you hit a ring. <laughs> Can we investigate if this is an illusion? Uh, sure. Make an investigation check. And in that moment, there's a secondary uh. pulse of energy that washes over everyone and your age starts to begin to wither once again. Should put everyone at level six now, I believe. Yes. Yep. You're starting to get a little old a little fast. I remember the young youth days of my childhood now. <sighs> remember when we got to this island where we were young whippersnappers? <laughs> I mean, to be I've had plenty of whips in my time. <laughs> goblins do age. Do do not have a very long lifespan. Brother, I'm so old. Me too. I'm God. God. <laughs> my bones. So brittle and like paper, brother. Somebody help us. Uh. Outlaws. Said help oh. us. Oh <laughs> man, I'm going deaf. Maybe I'm getting hit by this age. Okay. We all are all the time. <laughs> it's never ending. Time is ceaseless. Join Jurgle now. Yes. Help Would you me. roll on the illusion, by the way? I rolled the natural too. That's not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm up. just I'm I'm fascinated by all this. I'm too distracted. He phased through rock for a second. It was weird. <laughs> uh, gonna take out 50 feet of hemp and rope. Uh, tie a, a piton around the end of it. Kind of like a grappling hook. And throw it up. Okay. You hurl it up. It definitely goes through the pain. You hear a thud outside of your field of view. 
above or like above okay it's up there yeah, yeah. Uh, and then slowly gonna pull on it, see if we can get it to catch on anything. Um, pulling on it, you're hearing the scraping of the metal piton on stone as you're just pulling on it. Uh, it would take a few tries, but yes, you would effect effectively lock it into place. Okay, cool. Uh, then gonna climb up it. Okay. As you're taking the lead on this and starting to climb. You climb, climb, climb. Put your hands off to the sides, pull yourself up. And the moment your head kind of passes that crease, there's this immediate cold air and gusting winds. Looking around, you see ocean on every angle and a slant that you're of stone. Uh, so he's gonna, Captain's gonna pull himself up and then poke his head, you know, if possible, like back down through, so just the, the head is visible to those below, and he'll go, well, it looks like we're at the top of the mountain spire tower thing. For those not in the glass pane, it looks like the captain's head just poked through glass and rock. <laughs> Who so is this? That's a cool thing. Uh, it's safe. Climb up the rope. I think we have more to discover up here. Uh, and he's going to retract his head, and then as the others climb up, he's going to. Hold on, hold on. Is that hole big enough for me? Yes. <laughs> to, to answer your question, <laughs> that is a big concern for my chunky ass. I'm not good at climbing rope, but I can try. Climb the rope in front of me. Yeah, because you fucking suck at climbing. That's why I'm here, you bitch. I'm not start climbing the rope. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Your hands fumble for a second every time. You have to do the, the cross-stitch arm pulling, so you have to go... It takes you significantly longer, because you have to make sure your hands touch each other to make sure you're not missing the rope. Is there any way I can help... <laughs> Your legs are locked, <laughs> so that way you can just. Anyway, so if everyone's getting up, everyone can if it easily climb out of this hole. You can tell the piton the piton has locked on what looked to be like a slant of rock, and it's meshed with the ground, and there was like a slit by accident that it just happened to slide right into. But. Um, as everyone climbs out and stands, you are at the top of that slanted portion of the mountain, which was several thousand feet up, mind you. Mm. Kind of scary. Uh, rolling down that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't advise it. Um, is there anything up here? Uh, I mean, there's you're currently at like the bottom portion of it, a little bit further. That's why you can actually like see down and see trees mm. and the multicolored portion. You can see your ship with the two uh, elven twins off onto it. They're just kind of doing nothing. They actually look like they're drastically concerned about. Uh, they're like looking at their arms and kind of like panicking some, but. Can I look around again and see magic again? Uh, yeah. There's there's a thin layer of necrotic energy. Anything new? <laughs> you can Since see we're high up this time. Off to the distance, the ring of purple, the purple water. At the edge of it, right before it reaches the blue, the magic stops. And way past the water, or... Effectively, you see magic in the ring of purple. Okay. And, okay. I'm looking towards the ship direction, you said, or just anywhere? I mean, you that was just the direction that was initially there. Looking off to the side, you see trees and more beach. Off to the right, there's only trees and then a side cliff, essentially. Nothing that's, nothing that's brighter, I'm guessing? No? Uh, brighter? No. no. Nothing magically brighter. 
I see no difference up here with the magic wise. So, well, uh, looking up the the mountain, is there anything up there significant? Um, noticeably, you can see that the slant eventually does crest, and that's the end of your vision. You'd have to climb up to the crest to see if anything was up there. Currently, you're standing just like it's not like a single like five foot column or anything it is an expanse of land it is easily about 50 feet wide so that you do have some stable ground to walk around on yeah, right yeah so i guess probably not even saying much captain's just gonna start walking up to you know survey the entirety of this area okay everyone following then I don't want to go down, so going up's the best thing. Okay. When you crest the top... Hmm? Oh, oh, just ravens out. Oh, gotcha. Uh, when the raven comes out, this thick gust of wind is pushing the raven. And it's halting its flight, even. It's still able to get some air, but the winds are exceptionally thicker here and they're pushing people and pushing the the raven exceptionally the raven's wings are having difficulty trying to keep up with the wind itself uh i am going to i have a feature for this oh uh i can control the weather around me if it's windy i can use a bonus action to choose the direction that the wind is blowing in a hundred foot radius sphere centered on me Ooh. Uh, so we're going to have the wind at our back. So it's pushing you up to it. Correct. All right. Raven and the has... moment, Ooh, the moment sorry, just to clarify in case you throw anything weird at us, the moment we get to a cliff or something, we're going to have the winds, uh, you know, just kind of swell up or something. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, just in case there's any cliffs. Having forethought, that's good. The wind around everyone just begins to suddenly shift. It, it calms for a second, and then all of a sudden you can feel the cool air pushing up against your backs. The raven takes off flying due to the wind, <laughs> <laughs> but can't get back. <laughs> well, I guess if, if I can... I'll just try it. to get him a hundred... I'll just put him a hundred feet up in the air so he'll be able to spot something earlier. Right, and he can still te like telepathically talk to you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't matter. It was just for flavor, but <laughs> the as you are walking up this expanse of land, the Raven would spot everything first. And Dr. Leach, you're getting a description of what looks to be a circular stone slab that has a single odd individual sitting on it it's like a older woman standing on it with their back to the direction you're walking like overlooking mm -hmm. the ocean itself um from this height as well the ground around her is um it slants out and flattens but at the edge of it, it goes into a spiked cliff that slants and kind of curves smooth to the ground until there looks to be, like, a thick cove. Like a, um, what's that called? It's like the, it, the land comes, it's like a crescent beach and the walls are expansive around it. An atoll, I believe. Atoll. I am not knowledgeable in anything, so good. I will take your word for it. <laughs> An atoll. A lagoon, maybe? An atoll or a lagoon? I think it's either or. Regardless, if you can picture that, that's what it is. <laughs> I can, so thank you. Yeah. And yeah. Um, there's a small little passage for uh, ocean water. All the water in there, inside the crest is blue, not purple. But that's what Woman up ahead, on a ritual site, 
Perhaps a source, or at least could answer questions. Hmm. And some protected water up ahead. It seems unaffected. Something's going on. Better than nothing. I really don't want to climb back down. Right. Well, we'd best prepare ourselves. Who knows if this woman will be hostile or not. Uh, the captain says, drawing his saber. Draw my big sword. Also draw my sword, which I have in my sheath, in the same place I always keep it. I got it, I got it. <laughs> Say it <laughs> like that. It's just... I Something's off about you. I can't tell hey, what Don't worry about it as he takes out his sword weirdly. <laughs> <laughs> I hold it upside down, like this. <laughs> Grab it by the wrong side. I've got it. <laughs> I right? write down yeah. possible tendonitis. <laughs> <laughs> so many diseases, man. Go see a doctor. We got one right here. <laughs> so as you are cresting over this rocky terrain and that flattens out, the wind behind you keeps pushing you upwards and eventually you're standing effectively about 30 feet from the figure on this stone slab the slab itself doesn't have any markings it's just a uh, almost like a cauldron and the top of it is flattened out the plan should we go up to her or Maybe call from here. I like cough. Um. <laughs> See if I get any response. <laughs> As you uh, just go, <clears throat> there's a uh, nonable like uh, lean, and the woman leans backwards and looks at you upside down as now she's laid flat out on top of the cauldron, head just looking upside down at you. Oh, hello. Didn't realize that there were a company. Likewise. What's... do you... what's going on here? Who are you? I'm just the keeper of this place. What is this place, exactly? I guess the best way to describe it would be... A never-ending life. People who want to stay. Like a heaven? Yeah, like an afterlife. But are they dead? No, they're still alive. Before we start talking about that alive. <laughs> what, what were you about to say, guy? Oh, before we start doing more talking, do I see any magic on her? I'm guessing thin layer of necromancy. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you also <laughs> see a thin layer of illusion. Illusion. I, uh, hmm. <clears throat> I try to, I move over to, I try to move over to the captain. Move over to the captain. Is, is what? that the, is Lord. that the, the is expanse he? of land I was talking about? <laughs> uh, Twisted, <laughs> your backdrop, is that what the image was that you looked up? That's yep. literally exactly what I was thinking of. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I just looked up in a toll, so I'm like, yeah, that one works. <laughs> Solid. Anyways, continue. I move over to Captain and whisper, there's some illusion, there's some illusion magic on her. Uh, so you said that she looks like an older woman? Yeah, she's, um, she's human, but she looks like be almost like she's probably in her late sixties. Hmm. I don't trust her as far as I could probably throw her. 
But we need more information. Captain will uh, step forward slightly and go, If you're the keeper of this place, who are you keeping it for? Is this your work here? Well, yeah. I wanted a place to stay, and, well, I found it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the <laughs> sudden <laughs> change! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Might we ask your name? <laughs> to be honest, I kind of forgot it. I've been here for so long. Uh, call me Patty. Patty? Wait a minute. Patty! Luke! Daughter! 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 Huh. What? <laughs> that literally didn't what? get any of that. <laughs> I don't think those were real words. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Lieutenant. Yes. Oh. Hey. <laughs> we go grab, go grab a body from all the way down there. Daughter! <laughs> <laughs> Patty, we met a lieutenant from the naval force mm -hmm. down in the village below. She yeah. said, you're her daughter. No. Uh... Mm. I don't think she actually has a daughter. I mean, she didn't say anything about it. Um, no, it's it, it's just a name that uh, she was calling out, so I figured, why not? You know what's going on with them down there. Yeah. I'm the reason why they can stay here. So, of course. They have a scar down the center. Was that your work? Oh, it's not a scar. It's it's how they can stay here. They it's not a scar. You're talking about the the thin line, right? Yes. It, it's a vein. It's how they can effectively continuously live here. What do you mean by continuously live here? Like grant immortality or yeah. I see. So everything on here ages super quickly. So if they want to live, they have to come to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, effectively. Hmm. How does this island work? What is the source of this aging process? Um. Well, the source of the aging, I guess, is from me. Um. Because, I mean. I was living here alone for a long time, so having friends, having some other acquaintances, arguments, a lot of things didn't really, I guess, happen. So once the crash happened and all the land, neighboring land, had been uh, washed away, um, I don't know, I felt different. The, the moment I kind of, like, reached a certain age, I guess I... Because I've lived on this island for, at this point, probably over a hundred years. Um... People just didn't come here, so I... made things look different. I used some of my own magic, because, I mean, I was practicing while I was here, and, well, something came out a little bit wrong. But it's completely natural. There's nothing to worry about unless, I mean, you choose to not, you know, come talk to me. Natural? Mm -hmm. So what's causing everyone to change, to age rapidly? I just said that. It was me. But what did you do, exactly? Magic? So you cause them to age rapidly, and then what? You tell them that you can stop it? I can that, tell them you... that they can live here till the end of time, effectively. Some people... Do they know? Do they know that they just wander those streets in the village doing nothing? 
they know what they're doing. They have tasks. They have a life. Sure, some of it's more droll than anything else, but while we're here, we have so much less to worry about than what? War, issues with trade, and arguments amongst most trivial matters. People here are happy. No, they aren't. The people here don't feel anything at all. Oh. They live in a fake life. <laughs> They're drones. Well, if I'm honest... And Please. Sometimes, in automatic life is easier. If life is something you all, is, if you're not able to control, then you're not really living your own life. Well, <clears throat> you are on our home. And I say our because they chose to stay here. I did not force anyone to stay. They could either stay or they could die. One of the two. You didn't give them a choice. You gave them an ultimatum. I mean, it is an ultimatum, not just a choice that's semi-provoked. She has a point there. I don't agree with it, but I see your point. Well, the good thing for you is that all things end. Hmm. The, uh, I'm looking like at this. the undead person. <laughs> right now. <laughs> I will say, just before you possibly make a mistake. Oh, moment... I'm great at those. <laughs> My sort of magic doesn't exactly affect you, I can see. You're not aging, because obviously you're not alive. So, you can stay. Everyone else can stay, too. The only thing is, is that I do have to go through my ritualistic magic that allows you to stay. But you'd be able to stay just fine. Well, I, for one, have no intentions of staying here. I don't either. If I don't, if I stay here, I won't be making gold. Do you want money? I can give you money. Money. Yes. Oh, God. Gold. This money. <laughs> you speak up. Gold, you said, right? I could give you gold. I have to see it to believe it. Make an insight check. What is insight based off of? Wisdom. Oh, wisdom. No. Oh, yeah, wisdom. I should be fine with that. Oh shit, unless I will like that. <laughs> Eight. Okay. Yeah, no, she is essentially telling you that she can give you as much gold as you want. Can't. What good is that gold going to do you when you're a drone like the rest? Listen to the Bane Turtle. He has a good point. But gold, brother. I mean, or they do that. have names. Oh, I know each and every single member of the family. Oh, fuck. But do uh, they just, how far they away are... is she from me? How far away is she from you? Uh, yeah. About 30 feet. Damn. <laughs> oh, no. The gold, sounds really, the gold sounds really good, brothers. Gold. She knows who we are, brother. You'll be able to stay here with the, on the island with me. You have an immeasurable amount of wealth. And then you, looking over at uh, Dr. Leech, you would be able to stay as, like, I guess an assistant. You wanted to do some sort of research, I guess? You could be all by all means do that. Knowledge is something that grows over time. And obviously, if you... I'm, I'm not too sure your circumstance, um, but time won't affect you yet. Yes, yes, yes. I've already made a deal regarding that, and it's much better than this pissant deal you got right now. Oh, that's a little <laughs> bit rude. I'm only offering what I offer. No, it's else. a lot of bit. No, it's a lot of bit rude. You're masquerading in a powers that you should not dabble. 
So here's my deal for you. You're going to let these people go. I mean, I can't. I think you can. No, I can't. The moment that whatever I do keeps them here, um, there have been some who have stayed on this island maybe 50 or so years. The moment that they kind of leave, everything will go and hit them immediately. Then they'll be in Jurgle's hands. And that's the way things are. don't know if you're quite understanding but well, it's still talking I'm gonna like slowly inch my way closer to her <laughs> like how close are you trying to get <laughs> like just kind of like sidestep one step every few seconds then like kind of sidestep again and Try to be like <laughs> unnoticeable about it with my fat ass. <laughs> Staying thirty feet in distance, or still trying to get closer. Still trying to get closer. Right? How close are you trying to get subtly? Uh, within melee, <laughs> <laughs> five feet. <laughs> that's going uh, to be kind of hard, buddy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you I'm gonna have to piss her off a lot more than I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because I mean, this is like this is only 50 feet wide, <laughs> so you can only side saddle so far, and there's no obstruction of view. <laughs> but you can certainly try. <laughs> I'm gonna try. Okay. I, I'm not a smart turtle, okay? No one said we were smart players. <laughs> I mean, three goblins, a turtle, a undead skeleton, and a... Yeah, we can take yeah, a god, right? Know. This is totally gonna work. <laughs> I'm the only non-weird... Let me look well, at the cat out. The cat immediately wanted into the room and then immediately wants out because he's weird. I just played the sun is so neat. I mean, that's a cat. Yeah. They do it intentionally. They know. The cats are on our side. <laughs> Baby. <gasps> oh... The gold, I mean, buddy. I could just eat my the sword gold, at her, but that would The be... gold! Wait, yeah, I'm gonna eat my sword at him. Eat your sword at him? Yeah, I'm gonna yell, catch! And eat my sword at her. And then oh. gust of wind again, to make okay. the sword go faster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the hundred, the wind is pushing that direction. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot you just tied that thing up. 100 feet? So are you actually throwing your sword at her? Yeah, I'm gonna yell at her to catch this, and then I'm gonna yeet it. <laughs> that's how you yeet a sword. Eh. <laughs> Go ahead and roll to attack. With advantage because of the wind and it's no. a surprise. <laughs> it's it's not a surprise. <laughs> hey, surprise! Catch. <laughs> she actually catches it. Oh. Oh. Uh, would I still get the same bonuses with yeah. throwing it? Yeah. Will you say nat 20 again? Come on, Bane. No, I don't. No. Uh, 24 total. 24 is going to hit. Yes. Kill Grandma, please. Does she catch it? I mean, she doesn't catch it. Because I told her to catch. And then... I thought she you were trying with to her body. I thought you're trying to literally hit her. <laughs> no, I, that's why I yelled pet. Oh, uh, I see. Okay, so sure. I'm so confused. <laughs> what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? He's. I thought this was initiative time, but maybe not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so gonna... as you throw the blade, it swishes into the air several times, and in her upside down state. She lifts up an arm and grabs the blade. Okay. She needs to roll a charisma saving throw of 19. Yeah. Okay. Bam! Uh, Bam! 23. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is, is she grabs the blade and you see her t cock her head. Oh. 
oh, well, you'd be able to stay as well. And she throws it back at you. When she throws it, there's immediate... It's almost like it's cutting through the wind. You can see the wind parting past the blade as it's thrown directly back at you. Uh, Damn it! 26 to hit. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yep. <laughs> Ow. Uh, yeah, this is a great sword as well, so... Yeah, so... 36 plus... Two. Well, it's plus... Plus her modifier, well, not yours. Yeah, her mod. Yeah. But does not get the plus one bonus. Uh, you do suffer eight points of piercing damage as it just goes, boom, collides with you at extreme force. When it hits you, it almost spins you the moment it collides with you. Hit yourself? <laughs> A little bit. Oh. <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs> Hit like right in between the shoulder and collarbone. <laughs> Loser. I know. <laughs> well, you're an odd one. Using someone else's body, I suppose. But, after all, doesn't matter. If you wish to stay, then I will allow you to. We just have to go through the necessary steps. Would I still remain in full control? I would imagine. You're not but, sure? But won't we be like them down there? You are an odd case. I haven't had a traveler like you before. Much like I haven't had a traveler like him. And points over to Dr. Leech, who's skeletal face is just like there. <laughs> Expressionless, but you can detect anger somehow. <laughs> the in, un, the fake eyebrows just go in. Got like penciled into your skull. Well, I for one don't want to stay. And even if it means those people down there die, the magic you're using here is foul and tainted. Oh. And I don't think we'll stand for it much longer. Well, that's a shame. I'm sorry you feel that way, but uh, then I guess time will do its course. There's not much I... else I can feasibly do to help mediate the situation. Those yes, of you that have the offer it still stands. I can still give you an immeasurable amount of wealth, you and your two friends, and then I can give... Wait, two friends? Shh. We're not here. No. We're here. No, we can't let her know. She can't let her tell the secret. I ready to be ready, ready to sword, brother! <laughs> <laughs> this is what it took. <laughs> Just fully out loud. You got it, brother! Sword out uh, from like the chest cavity. See this little goblin hand come out holding a gun. <laughs> <laughs> brother, what are you doing? All of a sudden, six arms come out of there. Each one's holding a Tommy gun. <laughs> and those six testicles just flapping out. <laughs> Somehow, this is the strangest thing I've seen all day. <laughs> Uh, and you know, with that, I think Captain a Storm is gonna go, Enough with this foulery! Charge, with brothers! Now! And he's gonna cast Lightning Bolt. And okay. then I guess I want us to charge in, attacking, as well. I will do a Blood Curse. Okay. Dread form. Alright. Right. Let me get the music going quick. <laughs> I don't know, that music sounded pretty intense to me. Dun, 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 we almost, honestly, we were almost swayed by the gold until she was going to tell our secret. <laughs> I gold. Like, that was really good. Gold! Damn it, why didn't she fail the roll? Because she's way more powerful than you. <laughs> I think so... she's way more 
I think she's way stronger why, than all of us. Why couldn't oh, yeah. we get a nat one? Why couldn't we be at level 11 when this happened? I mean, she would have had to roll... Not to spoil things, she would have had to roll two natural ones in order for it to work. So, oh, she had advantage. What? For certain things. <laughs> for certain <Lame>. reasons. <laughs> that would have been great, though, if she would have. Like, I mean, yeah, the game would have been bad. over. We wouldn't have had a second session. <laughs> <laughs> Cult leaders, high charisma. I'm hoping her wisdom <laughs> shit. We'll see. Absolutely victorious. All right. So everything that happens here, we got the lightning bolt. We've got uh, the blood curse, dread form. What is the? What's guy doing? Charge it in. Go to slice. Go to the slicer. Okay. With our shield arm, would you allow me to unbuckle the pants so Lower Brother can also aim his gun? <laughs> oh, there's a zipper. I just We're not gonna zip okay. it to do this. I'm gonna take off the mask and then put my arm out as well. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Amazing. So now the facade has dropped. A little ch <laughs> chest flap opens up, and you see a little green arm holding a, looks to be like a flintlock pistol. A mask come up where you see a disgustingly green face with several blemishes and like a long standard nose. <laughs> Stick its arm out after like lifting it up a little bit. And then you see, you just hear, <laughs> and a little gun points out the crotch. <laughs> yes! That's the oddest penis I've ever seen. It was with a bang. Oh! I could write a whole medical test, te whole medical textbook about this. Doctor, do you have? It's not do, you a have a, a do you have a way of curing this? this <laughs> do you have a diagnostic doctor? <laughs> I've been green balls. It could take a lifetime, but if that's what it takes. <laughs> hey, if you stay on the island, you'll have as long as you need. <laughs> Anyways, so dexterity saving throw first. Yes, sir. All right, advantage on that. I'm sorry, what? Um, twenty-one. Yeah, that saves. Okay, so half damage. Uh, yes. and then yeah. Locks. Ooh, a lot of ones. Uh, half damage would make it eleven. Eleven points. Okay. Lightning. Eleven. That's half. <laughs> yeah, lightning bolt is strong, dude. Lightning Bolt is like 8d6. Yeah. It's a third level spell. <laughs> yes, sir. It's Fireball in the line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so immediately after everyone just starts rushing, this Lightning Bolt <laughs> curves out towards her. And you can see it full... She doesn't move. It full-blown collides with her, but it washes off the side of her body. I guess this has to be them. And as it like washes off, the lightning bolt is like coursing around and still affecting her body. You can tell she doesn't wince or anything, but there's like this slight pulse. And with that pulse comes with rapid aging from each of you. So now you are level seven. But then also this like thin veil falls and when it falls downwards, going from top to bottom, this skeletal face with remaining bits and pieces of flesh and remains of what looks to be a human corpse is fully standing there. And she just looks at you. The hair turns to graying, withered amounts with patches remaining. And whatever clothes she was wearing is tattered. And that's where I think we're going to call our session. So we have Lock. <laughs> we have the blood curse, three goblin hands, pointing pistols, a lightning bolt, and dread form. And with that, I'm excited for us to kick off. <sighs> Why do we the gotta finale? Stop? <laughs> uh, oh. I guess we're not supposed to find this place that easily. Or well, just wait it out until we're, like, I don't know, stronger. I mean, I figured you guys would do a few other things inside the town. I, I have other stuff prepared in there, just in case of stuff, but at the same time, it doesn't 
I mean, you guys could have just left immediately. <laughs> we should have killed them. We should have killed everyone there. Like, there's been several yeah. ways for you guys to just leave. <laughs> Gold. Just, just turn around nah. and the boat just leave. Gold. <laughs> But. I've got to kill my not sister. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, when you told me you were undead, I was like, oh wow, this is actually interesting. This roleplay aspect good. is going to be different. Be good. <laughs> um, Her heresy. <laughs> Burn the heretics. Oh. Well, the, the, does she have any blood in her body? Uh, you don't know. I suppose, well, I suppose you would have to bone. use the blood curse. What's the blood curse say? Uh, yeah, if there's no blood in their body, it doesn't work unless I amplify it. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, then no. <laughs> there's no blood in her body. <clears throat> Not even her um, bones. <laughs> get it. Yep, yeah, bone marrow. There is blood and marrow. Oh. If we're going to get, like, really I deep into it. I mean, sure, but then Dr. Leech over there has got blood. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who knows? Maybe the uh, three goblins sucked the marrow out of him while he was flying around. That's no, why they're getting those hollow tones on his ribs. Um, but no, <laughs> she is classified as undead. So I think, I remind me if if I'm wrong, but Dr. Leech, doesn't that play part in the dread form as well? Like they have disadvantage attacking you or something? I don't think it actually does. If I'm, I'll look it up one sec. Well, anyways, we'll figure that out later. Um, three of you, once again, thank you for playing in this ridiculous one-shot of ridiculous happenstance. Um, it's been actually pretty fun uh, getting getting this going. Um, if uh, you have anything to plug, then by all means, plug. I know Dr. Leech over there doesn't, and <laughs> he's Thanks for having me. Have fun. Had fun. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. I got the perfect way to plug myself. Hey. Oh, hey. There you Very go. Nice. <laughs> it does get cut off some, but uh, I have your Twitter handle there. So. I don't have anything oh, fancy, but I will shamelessly. Hey, there we go. Oh, there we go. Now I can see the whole thing. How fancy. Wow. Uh, there's some, some wind in your room. <laughs> it's oh, the wind it's from your, from your some, no, I mean, we are in Minnesota. We are in Minnesota. So. I mean, yeah. I mean, but there's no snow yet. <laughs> Yeah. Keyword, yet. Yet. I know, it's been yet. a weird year. It was already October and no snow. We would have hey. had snow in like... <laughs> <laughs> We're doing the Minnesotan goodbye, all right? <laughs> Devinator, plug your stuff, please. Because Paradise RPG deserves it. Oh, stop. You, We, we try. Really, 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 I'm really... I'm pointing hard. up because he is directly above me in Discord. <laughs> oh, on, on OBS, I have it in a different thing. Well, Monday well, night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, twitch.tv slash Paradise RPG. Check us out if you want, or don't. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. Like this woman? Good. I, I am yeah. here to tell you how to live your life. Do it. They deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> no. What was that again? Paradise whatever? Paradise yeah, Paradise RPG. Web. <laughs> Paradise Life. <laughs> That's, my channel is Paradise Whatever. It's... Uh, <laughs> Really weird shit. I don't recommend it. <laughs> Paradise RPG, though, if you're looking for uh, some D and D actual play. <laughs> and um, with that, we will be continuing this at some point in the available future. I'm gonna get these episodes out as soon as possible, however, because uh, we haven't posted content in like six months. Yeah, whose fault is that? Uh, it's mine, COVID's, and then also technology. But um, well, hey, if you better. need technology help, oh hey, yeah, I mean, I've got it kind of handled. I'm still there. We're doing the Minnesotan thing again. We're moving on. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening. This has been a blast. I've been dying to play D and D and DM again. So. Thank you, everyone involved, and we'll be seeing you again on another Misruled Adventure. Ciao. Thank you, brother. Bye. Awesome.